Okay, um, we are back with the 49th meeting of new directions in group three and trend categories. Today, our speaker is Nikhal Bandarko, and he'll be talking to us about weight structures to adjacent D structures. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very good to speak here. So we'll start from some basic notation and definitions. Okay, here is my notation for the set of morphisms. Usually it's, it's actually all my categories are additive. So I use uh, cohomological complexes. And uh, <clears throat> if I B is subcategory of some C, uh, then uh, I can see that it's retraction closure in C, so all the retracts of objects of B inside C. And I say it's retraction, it's retraction closed is if it coincides with, with this retraction closure. So orthogonal uh, means that uh, two classes of objects are orthogonal. Uh, it means that uh, you have only zero morphisms. Okay, so C are divided with those B triangulated category. So only zero morphisms between objects of these two classes. So this is not some symmetric. Uh, possibly I will need the orthogonal, the right orthogonal somewhere. Actually, I'm not quite sure. Oh yes, I will need, yes. Uh, okay, uh, so here's the definition of T structures. Uh, so the basic example comes from ca canonical truncations of complexes. Uh, so the T structure truncations are factorial and so, so enjoy the following properties. So uh, you probably know all of this very well. So I, uh, I use the homology connotation. Mm, so I don't plan to stop here unless you want me to say some detail. So for any object, you have a T decomposition tri triangle like this. Uh, the heart, uh, is the intersection of uh, these two classes. And it can be said to, okay, I'm not sure that it's a canonical term, so I, it's anti-connective means there are no, no uh, negative <clears throat> uh, C extensions between objects in the heart. And it's abelian. And uh, certainly it, there exists T homology functor from C underlined into the heart of T. Uh, now, so weight structures, uh, so uh, introduced used independently by me and David Paukstella, and he calls them core T structures, and I don't like how it sounds. So the simplest uh, example is the homotopy category of complexes over an additive category. You can also take it bounded version, bounded above or bounded below. Uh, since I use homological notation for weight structures and the complexes are homological, so weight at most zero should be complexes that are uh, isomorphic to complex accelerated to in degrees at least zero and vice versa. Uh, so the uh, non-negative uh, weight part consists of complexes isomorphic to those uh, in degrees at most zero. Uh, so here are the axioms. Uh, so for some technical reasons that are not really important, you want to them to, uh, these two classes to be retraction closed in uh, the category. <coughs> this, this is how they will, they behave with respect to shifts. So this is homology connotation. So orthogonality axiom and weight decomposition. 
Okay, so here is uh, an example for complexes. So this is uh, what I uh, denoted L, V, W, as, and this is R, W, these two complexes. And this is certainly a distinguished triangle. Uh, so an observation that uh, both T uh, the definitions of T structures are so dual and the definition of V structures is so dual in a rather uh, uh, simple uh, way. And so, okay, one of the reasons not to call V structures co T structures. Uh, so here is an annotation for shifts. So homology connotation, so I add I to weights. And uh, when I intersect, I obtain objects of weight exactly I, and a, the heart of V consists of objects uh, of weight zero. So it's an additive category, and now it's connective. Uh, it, uh, there don't exist any positive degree extensions between objects in the heart of V in the category C. Uh, now, weight complex, okay, so if you, uh, under certain assumptions, uh, you have a, a functor from C into the usual homotopy category, of the heart and it's exact. If uh, you don't have this assumption, you should, yes. Um, you run into some problems when you construct it and uh, you have to modify this category, but you st still have some functors and works almost as well. And uh, I will not uh, say about this in, in the talk, but it's conservativity is very well understood at the moment. So you might say that if you have no objects of infinitely large and on infinitely small weights, then this functor would be conservative. <coughs> so about the com uh, example of this complex is, uh, so for K of B uh, and any its variation bounded, uh, so the heart uh, for the corresponding qubit Uh, I call this weight structure uh, the stupid one because it corresponds to stupid truncations of complexes. Then the heart will be not be it's uh, not equivalent to B itself. It will actually be uh, the retraction closure will be in the corresponding category. Uh, so it's actually equivalent to the uh, Karobi envelope of B if uh, you take the bound version, and then it, it can be a little smaller if you take the bound version. So here is an example of a so weight decomposition, so it corresponds to stupid filtration of complexes. Okay, uh, some applications of uh, weight structures, uh, so you, you can obtain some certain weight filtrations and weight spectral sequences for cohomology. Uh, so the, uh, now I will just say you that uh, stupid truncations are called stupid because they are not canonically determined by this object if you consider it as a homotopic class of complexes, homotopic equivalence class of complexes. Uh, so stupid truncation is certainly not functorial, but still it doesn't uh, prevent you from defining wave filtrations, and it's well defined, doesn't depend on any choices. I will tell you about this later, probably. <coughs> so uh, here is a theorem uh, that allows to construct uh, uh, all wave structures that are bounded. Uh, so if if uh, you have a connective subcategory, 
such that uh, C occurs uh, its own smallest subcategory that is closed. Uh, triangulated subcategory is called that is retraction closed and contains B. So it generates uh, B generates uh, C in, in this rather small strong sense. Uh, then uh, so this connected subcategory gives you uh, an unique weight weight structure. Uh, so this is a useful theorem. <clears throat> Certainly, uh, you don't need it if you define the weight structure and complexes. But it's quite useful if you define uh, weight structures on relative motifs, and you can also use it to define uh, on motifs of a field. You can also use it to define. Uh, uh, so you should consider certain. Uh, Subcategory of Chow motifs over a base inside Wayowski motifs over this base. Uh, so there is also a question of uh, in both of these categories, the question of uh, the coefficient ring. And here, in some cases, it's better not to use this theorem, but it's better to uh, use certain gluing arg argument. Uh, you, this theorem also can be used for uh, uh, this graded polarizable Hodge category, um, Hodge complex category, and so you should consider weight zero pure polarizable Hodge complexes because your polarizability is important here because you don't want uh, to have. Uh, Extensions of degree one, <clears throat> and there are also Hodge modules, at least our algebraic uh, complex varieties, where th this works as well. Uh, uh, now there are lots of topological examples. Uh, so the ordinary stage is equivalent one as well. Uh, so you can either obtain uh, the theorem above. To obtain a weight structure on the on bounded spectra, probably this is the term. Uh, and if you want to have uh, a weight structure, but it extends uh, nicely to the whole SH, and you can do it with theorem seven below. Actually, there are these some intermediate theorem theorems, but I will not. State them in this talk. Uh, okay, now I will uh, say about adjacent structures and some related definitions. So adjacent structures uh, structures means that uh, either. Uh, these halves of uh, V and T can side, or these halves and V and T can side. And you, uh, so it's well known that, that the opposite halves <clears throat> of the uh, of V and T can be recovered from these halves. Uh, so pass into the corresponding orthogonality complements. But so the opposite parts uh, usually don't coincide. So uh, so these two classes coincide, and then you take two two distant orthogonals to, to this class to obtain v. So one of them will be the opposite half of v, and then another orthogonal will be the opposite part of t. <clears throat> uh, I say that the wage structure is smashing if. Uh, so the whole category should be closed with respect to small coproducts. And uh, one should demand that this class is closed with respect to uh, C coproducts. Actually, the other, so the at least zero site is closed with respect to these coproducts automatically. And this is my notation for the localizing uh, Category uh, generated by some set of some class of objects. Uh, 
uh, <coughs> so if you the simplest examples of uh, adjacent structures uh, <coughs> so it's often the case for an abelian category that uh, it's derived category uh, may, maybe you should bound it uh, is isomorphic uh, either to the homotopy category of projectives or the, the corresponding homotopy category of injectives. And uh, then you have uh, the corresponding weight structures on these homotopy categories. And uh, you you have, uh, so they are adjacent to like this. Below, I will also use uh, the notation of, of orthogonal complement because as, I, as I've just explained, if you know this class 40 or of V, then or you know these classes, you recover the opposite classes uniquely, uniquely, and you actually use some orthogonality pass to uh, consider some orthogonal complement. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> some statements about orthogonal structures. Uh, so certainly if you have uh, T is left orthogonal to V, then uh, you can pass to the dual. Okay, uh, then uh, if this is the case, then uh, the heart of V uh, gives, so in the obvious by functor, so you restrict the C morphism by functor to HV cross HT, and then you obtain that HV embeds into exact functors <coughs> from a, uh, the heart of T into abelian groups. And uh, HT is an abelian category that exactly embeds into all contravariant additive functors from the heart of V into abelian groups. <coughs> Uh, so now to the smashing case, if uh, the category is generated uh, by oh, some uh, set of objects PPJ and you compute uh, the weight complexes, this is the weight complexes of PJ, whatever it means. So we, it's always so it's always a complex that has certain terms. Uh, then uh, the heart consists of uh, retracts of all the products of uh, these objects. In particular, if you have a single generator, then you should consider the terms of each weight complex. And it really, uh, so the heart is not, it means that the heart would be rather reasonable in this case. And a nice theorem, an exact as one, <coughs> existence one. Uh, so you should assume that uh, the category C satisfies the Brown representability assumption. So any uh, functor that uh, sends uh, products in C into products in, or be any cohomological functor that sends uh, products in C into products of abelian groups is representable. In this case, for any smashing weight structure, you have the, the right orthogonal and the heart will uh, be uh, consists all the functors that respects that sends uh, coproducts in HV into uh, products of abelian groups. So T exists and uh, you can compute the heart, it's hard. Uh, now, uh, okay, uh, so how can I obtain uh, some summation wage structures and transmission T structures that are, uh, can be defined similarly. 
uh, you can start from uh, certain <coughs> generators. So this is definition for generation for uh, T. So uh, then T at most zero will be uh, the orthogonal uh, to uh, negative shifts of P, curly P. And uh, we generated uh, by this class if uh, Uh, oh yeah. P should generate this uh, generated by P. I should should P should, P should be written here. Uh, so uh, generator, you must say that you look for for the uh, smallest uh, T at more zero uh, part of uh, wage structure with the smallest. T at most zero parts that contains P. And here you look for the weight structure with the smallest V at least T at least zero. Uh, and here you took, take a weight structure with the smallest V at more uh, zero parts that contains P. <coughs> uh, and uh, two well-known conditions uh, for objects of triangular categories. Uh, so the, the best case for, for an object if it's compact, so the function uh, co-represence respects coproducts. But uh, sometimes you also need uh, more general objects, and uh, instead of considering uh, uh, Say, saying that a single object is nice, you rather say that a, a, class, a whole class is perfect. Uh, so a class is said to be perfect if, if so. If for any morphisms, set of morphisms that are orthogonal to orthogonal to this class, their coproduct is orthogonal to this uh, to this class as well. So you one says that these objects, uh, these morphisms are P no, P no. and these P, uh, class P no, morphisms P no should be closed with respect to coproducts. <clears throat> okay, uh, now uh, so some existence statement statements. So uh, if you have a set of complex objects, and this class will actually be perfect soon. Uh, so any uh, set of perfect objects generates a T structure. This is a well-known statement of Spanish mathematicians. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce their names and uh, which of the, the parts of these names should be included. Sorry. Uh, and uh, so for weight structures, uh, uh, so any any perfect class uh, generates a weight structure. And uh, actually, in this case, uh, uh, you may say that you have a single product generator of the heart. Uh, now, uh, so some results related to. Um, so some more uh, statements related to compactly generated T structures, you can actually just assume so uh, that uh, C, is, C itself is uh, compactly generated by this PI because uh, it, so if you are interested in the heart of these T structures it, uh, and you replace C by C prime, it, does, it will change the heart. And it's, it's very well known uh, from Neiman's results that both, uh, so if a category is completely generated, then it satisfies uh, the Brown representability condition and also the due to this condition. 
Uh, now, uh, uh, so if you have a category that is wise, uh, these two conditions, then for any compact objects, uh, you can, uh, so th this functor is representable uh, by this as a representability condition, and uh, you, you can consider this object that represents this function is said is called the Brown commands dual of the original P. And for for any okay, if we take the set of its uh, these duals, then it will be perfect in the opposite category. And uh, so it follows that you get a wage structure uh, on the opposite category. And as I've said, uh, this gives you also a wage structure on, on CA itself. And <coughs> this wage structure will be uh, adjacent to, uh, to T. So V will be right adjacent to T. Uh, so I would like to note that uh, so this is uh, this perfect generation generation statement is my uh, result though actually it's um, I wouldn't say that my methods of the proof is something very very much new. You actually take some version of well known triangulated methods. So usually it's apply, applied for for. To, to deduce a brown representability. Uh, but, and before that, uh, so Paul Stella proved uh, uh, that uh, wage structures can be completely, completely generated. But certainly these objects uh, are not perfect in the, uh, not compact in the opposite category. So, <coughs> Uh, compact generation is not sufficient to obtain this wave structure. And this appears to be the main example of a, a perfectly generated wave structure that is not completely generated. Oh, okay, uh, now, um, <coughs> if you t-truncate, uh, so I've said, uh, was it here? Yes. So I've said that uh, for a perfectly generated wage structure, uh, you have a coproduct generator of the heart. But actually uh, here, uh, this V is, uh, you may say, uh, co-perfectly co-generated. Uh, so if uh, heart has a, a product generator, and if you t truncate it, you obtain an objective uh, co generator of the cut of t. <coughs> and uh, luckily for me, um, uh, so there were some very nice criteria to prove uh, that uh, if you have this objective generator of the heart, it was easy to prove that the heart is, uh, uh, this heart satisfies the F5 axiom. And then you can proceed with certain methods for crowd of Krause, and maybe so something similar was introduced already by our Swander, and uh, so and then you get that the heart is gross and abelian. And you can actually prove more about this heart in this new in this, if you read this preprint. <coughs> so Say even more about this cut. Uh, okay, so you may say that this example, uh, so the basic object was, uh, the starting object was T and uh, then certain V was constructed and it was used uh, to obtain uh, some properties of T. So now if you go in the opposite uh, direction, direction, uh so a nice statement if uh, that if your um, t is uh, left orthogonal to a wage structure to is, that is smashing 
actually so if uh, if you have this equality you may say that this uh, wave structure is automatically cost machine but if it's also smashing then this uh, left adjacent t structure restricts to the category of combat objects <coughs> And uh, you can uh, use some nice uh, results of Keller Nicholas. So, if you have an ability, the same simple category <coughs> the generalized uh, C is a localizing category. So, of comp comp its object as complex, generate C is a localizing category and it's anti connective. <coughs> so, under these assumptions, uh, it generates V and T. And V is uh, smashing, uh, so it follows uh, that uh, T restricts to the category of compact optics, and you get an improvement of another result of this paper. Uh, so this is one of the uh, application, uh, one more application of adjacent structures, and. Uh, I would also like to say that. Uh, Adjacent T structures exist in the following setting. So, if the, you have a regular scheme that is proper over the spectrum of a ring, uh, then uh, for any uh, bounded wedge structure on the chromatopic category, uh, the, bounded, uh, the bounded derived category of coherent shifts on X. There exists, uh, oh, sorry, there should be T here. There exists left and right and just adjacent. Oh, yes, this is correct, yes. So this means that there exists, uh, so right and left orthogonal to V, there are certain T structures. And there are also these certain generalization of, of this <coughs> statement to singular schemes, but you need some more definitions. Uh, my main problem with these things is that you get rather so you you don't get all uh, t structures this, this way you you get a rather restrictive class of t structures so i don't have many examples unfortunately uh, now i will try to explain you how you prove something <clears throat> so the first observation That you have, uh, if you have uh, two objects, say X and Y, and you have uh, the weight uh, decompositions, then uh, you will opt, uh, also obtain <coughs> any morphism between uh, these objects extends to morphisms between uh, this decomposition, this extension is not unique, so it's very easy to explain. Uh, okay, so so if here, okay, so you just truncate here, and this collection of arrows will give you the corresponding moves between decompositions, and these arrows will give the, the complementary morphism. Uh, okay, uh, so simple observation, but it, it means immediately means that you can define certain wage filtrations. So if you have some functor H, uh, then this image <coughs> will not depend on any choices. So this object, so this object can depend on choices, certainly. <coughs> but the image of this object uh, in H of X, <coughs> will, uh, will be some object uh, that doesn't depend on any choices. So this is one observation. Another observation, so uh, here you have extensions of uh, 
morphism uh, so morphism between objects is tend to morphism between uh, Vedic position, but this extension is not unique. But uh, this not unique is, uh, can be fixed easily if you truncate in the distinct positions. Uh, so you should truncate. here in this example. So if you fix uh, these uh, way decompositions, uh, I will not introduce the presentation, yes, but here is an example. So you truncate Y here. <clears throat> then, so if you fix the rows and G, then you, this uh, diagram will be unique. Okay, yes, so here is my definition of the wave filtration. I didn't have to write it uh, down. And uh, so you can use this. Uh, and one of the important cases uh, when you, uh, so you, so you truncate G is this way, and uh, you can uh, use uh, so to obtain this uh, definition. You should truncate G equals to index. Then you obtain will obtain uh, these morphisms. Uh, and it's rather easy to prove that you you obtain a well-defined functor, so it essentially doesn't depend on any choices. Now, if H is cohomological, uh, so these functors are cohomological as well. And I call them uh, virtual uh, t truncations uh, for H. Uh, so I call them virtual t truncations. Is it written here? Oh no, it's written here. So uh, if you, if there is a right adjacent t structure, then uh, these far in H is representable. Then these two guys are representable by the corresponding t truncations. But uh, so still you get some cohomological functors uh, that are anyway. And uh, okay, it's if your weight structure is mentioned, then uh, these functors respect coproducts, and H respect coproducts, then these truncations will respect coproducts. So send coproducts into products, then these two guys will also send coproducts into products. And uh, also certain finite dimensionality conditions that are actual for. Uh, or the derived categories of coherent shifts will be respected by this construction. <coughs> so, uh, so we get adjacent T in theorem five. Uh, you obtain will <coughs> the T truncations of um, compact complexes will go compact in the first part of proposition eight, and you obtain uh, uh, adjacent T structures in the second part of proposition eight. And uh, this is basically all that I wanted to say today. Uh, thank you very much, and please ask questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mikhail. Uh, can we all meet ourselves and uh, give the speaker a round of applause? Sorry, did you ask me something? No, 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 no. I said, I said, let's give the speaker a round of applause. Um, do we have any questions for the speaker? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, okay, please, I will please. be glad to discuss. Yes. Hello. Hello. Please anyway, go. you can write me later. Okay. I will be glad to discuss this matters with you at any moment. Do you have any uh, questions right now? Sorry. Uh, please uh, go back to theorem seven. I'm, I'm curious if 
do you assume that? Yeah, here. Do you assume? Uh, uh, so that... sorry, I, I will leave you just for a second. Sorry. Be hot is perfect, or it does it follow from the the previous uh, uh, assumptions? Excuse me. So, what was your question about CRN seven? My my question is the following: Do you assume that P hat is perfect, or this is a consequence of the following uh, of the previous assumptions? Uh, so here, yeah, in, in two, so. the, uh, the, the the last the last part of the theorem. So I don't assume it. it actually, I am not quite sure that I can prove it. Uh huh. It's. Uh, I no, no, don't don't remember very well, but uh, I think that I, I asked myself whether it's perfect, and I wasn't able to prove it. <clears throat> but maybe, maybe it's probably true. So I don't assume it. Okay, so yes, uh, there, are, there are two distinct methods. Either you start from something nice that should be in the heart, and you generate, uh, yes, construct everything from the heart, construct the heart and everything. Uh, and uh, Or you construct, uh, generate, uh, start from something that should be in one of the halves, and you consider the, just put the orthogonal. So then you need this P, uh, P that, Yes, P, P that is here. It, this should be perfect, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, you you do, don't know. Uh, it's not obvious that the heart will be perfect. Okay. Thank you. I, I have I have a Thank small you. question uh, also regarding theorem seven. So uh, there was this new paper by Amnon Neiman where he took T to be a well-generated triangulate category, and then he generated a T structure starting from any set of objects. Is there an analogous version of that for weight structures? Mm. So I, I don't know. So you see, Niemus Merlin was to, so you want to compute, uh, uh, so he computed T truncations for ob all objects. Uh, so T uh, and uh, so T truncations of objects are canonical. So you can just say that you compute them. And weight truncations, the problem with weight truncations uh, is that they are not canonical. So it's convenient uh, in several. It's often very convenient, but uh, it it is not convenient when you uh, try uh, so. You don't have any uh, canonical weight truncation, and uh, so it's not clear how you can uh, apply Neiman's methods. But okay, okay uh, so if you can compare the settings, uh, so he starts from many set of objects, <coughs> but on the other hand, he needs a well-generated category. And this example, I so the opposite category, uh, I think it's not well-generated in general. Right, okay. Thank you very much. And I said, uh, one more observation that uh, if if your C is uh, well generated, then uh, any smash and weight structure is uh, perfectly generated and is also well generated in certain, in certain rather strong sense. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Do we have Thank any you. more questions? For the speaker. And uh, yeah, Lucas, the title of that paper by Neiman was T structures generated by objects. Thanks. Um, and uh, Michael, can I just say um, I had an email from Bernard Keller asking me to ask you if the slides will be available somewhere. So um, uh, I can send them to you, for yeah. example. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. I will do this. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will no check problem. them once again and send them yeah, to yeah, you. No from... okay, okay. If sorry. Yeah. 
Yes. If there are no more questions, let us thank Michael Bandarko again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, next week, we will have Grigory Garpusha from Swansea um, as a speaker in this series. So I'll hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.